Thanksgiving Mass from Enriquez Magaway families, Bong and Hazeline Villanueva, Harold and Marie Ringor, special intention from Richie Joy de Guzman, Nancy Custodio, Lawrence and Javier, Kervin Ray Natividad, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Father. Today is the Feast of the Holy Family. It is celebrated during the Christmas week to remind us that the Savior is born into a family. The Son of God, in order to draw us back to the Father, becomes a member of the human family. He shares not only the love and affection of Mary and Joseph, but also the fragility and, effect, uh, and danger they face because of poverty and injustice. May the Lord Jesus, who has come to be part of the human family, bless all our families. And so let us now light the Christmas candle representing our celebration of the birth of our Savior into a human family. Halina Jesus, Halina, Halina Jesus, Halina. Sa simulay sinalo mo, O Diyos, kaligtasan ng tao, Sa taktang panahon ay hinaray mo, Kalugsang tingkot sa iyo. As we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now acknowledge our sins and ask God for forgiveness. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with God our Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. In the first reading, it is God who builds the human family. The wise man, Sirach, teach us, uh, teach, teaches us that in order to live a family life pleasing to God, Parents should love their children, and children should honor and care for their parents, especially in their old age. A reading from the book of Syrah. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, he is heard. Whoever reverses his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten, firmly planted against the debt of your sins. A house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and be favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Your wife shall be like fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion, 
May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. In the second reading, the Apostle Paul reminds us that the faith in God and true Christian holiness are seen in acts of kindness, humility, patience, and love. Faith is lived in a family where husband and wife and children love and care for one another. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all this put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children so they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded 
at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ngayon ay kapistahan ng banal na mag-anak ni na Jesus, Maria at Jose. At ang kapistahan na ito ay nagpapaalala sa atin ng kahalagahan ng ating pamilya. Ngunit papaano po ba natin dapat pahalagahan ang ating pamilya? Bilang mga Kristiyano Katolikong Pilipino, tayo ay merong regalong tinanggap. Close family ties. Mahigpit ang ugnayan ng mga Pilipino sa pamilya. Mahalaga, binibigyan ng importansya at itinuturing ang pamilya bilang isang Kayamanan. Ngunit, papaano nga ba talaga dapat pahalagahan ang pamilyang Pilipino? Ito ba ay sa pamamagitan lamang ng pagkakaloob ng mga pangunahing pangangailangan para sa pamilya? Ito ba ay nasa larangan lamang ng material na sustento para sa ating mga pang-araw-araw na kinakailangan. Ito ba ay sa pamamagitan lamang ng pagpapanatili ng imahen ng pamilya bilang isang pamilyang naaayon sa konsepto, kultura na nilikha ng mga Pilipino? O baka may higit pa na dapat pamamaraan upang ang ating mga pamilya ay dapat pahalagahan. Hanguin natin mula sa ating mga nabasa na mga sita sa Biblia sa araw na ito kung papaano nga ba natin dapat pahalagahan ang ating mga pamilya. Una, ang pamilyang Pilipino ay dapat pinananatiling kalugod-lugod sa harap ng Diyos. Ang ating pamilya ay kailanman hindi dapat nakasentro sa isa't isa. Bagkos ang pamilyang Pilipino upang ito ay maging kalugod-lugod sa harap ng Diyos ay dapat nakasentro sa Diyos. Kikilalanin ng mga magulang at ng kanilang mga anak kung ano ang inordinahang tungkulin ng bawat isa mula sa Diyos sa loob ng pamilya. At ang pagtupad sa tungkulin na ito ay paggalang sa Diyos. Mga magulang, bilang mga ama at ina, kayo ay inatasan ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng inyong pagiging mga magulang 
upang magkaroon kayo ng kapangyarihan sa inyong mga anak. Bilang mga magulang, kayo ang tatayo na salamin at mukha ng Diyos sa inyong pamilya. Kaya ipamalas ninyo ang inyong kapangyarihan sa inyong mga anak. Ang kapangyarihan na sila ay palakihin, ang kapangyarihan na sila ay turuan, ang kapangyarihan na sila ay disiplinahin. Dahil ang kapangyarihan na ito na dapat na ipamalas ng mga magulang ay inyong pagpapahalaga sa pag, pagkakaloob sa inyo ng tungkulin ng Diyos bilang tagapagbuo ng pamilya. Huwag ninyong hahayaan na kayo ay lamunin ng inyong mga anak. Huwag ninyong hahayaan na kayo ay maging sunod-sunuran sa inyong mga anak. Dahil ang ordinasyon ng Diyos sa pamilya, ang mga magulang ang merong kapangyarihan. Tandaan, kapag tinutupad ninyo ito, iginagalang ninyo ang Diyos. At kung hindi ninyo tinutupad ito, winawalang bahala ninyo ang Diyos sa inyong buhay. Samantala, papaano naman ang tungkulin ng mga anak? Ang mga anak ay tinatawagan mula sa ating banal na kasulatan, lalo na sa unang pagbasa sa, sula, sa aklat ni Propeta Sirak. Mga anak, igalang ninyo ang inyong mga magulang Sundin ninyo sila dahil ang paggalang sa mga magulang at pagsunod sa kanila ay pagpaparangal bilang inyong mga ama at ina. Sino man ang gumagalang at sumusunod sa kanyang magulang ay animoy nag-iimpok ng kayamanan. Ang kanilang mga panalangin, diringgin. At papaano na ang mga anak ay dapat sumunod, makinig sa kanilang mga magulang? Aliwin ninyo ang inyong mga magulang. Huwag ninyo silang bibigyan ng sama ng loob. Sapagkat ang pagkaaliw sa mga magulang ay tanda ng pagtalima sa ating Panginoon. At sino man ang nagdudulot ng aliw sa kanilang mga magulang, pahahabain ng Panginoon ang kanilang buhay. Pero pag sinasabi natin ditong aliw, hindi kakantahan at sasayawan. Ang sinasabi ritong aliw ng mga anak sa kanilang mga magulang ay ang pagkalinga sa kanila ngayon lalo na sa kanilang pagtanda ang pagpapaumanhin sa kanila ngayon lalo na kung nakakalimot na sila ang ating paglingap sa kanila lalo na kung nangangatog na at mahina na ang kanilang mga kasukasuan mga anak tayo ay isinilang sa isang pamilya tulad ng ating Panginoon. At ang ating pagbibigay galang sa Diyos ay nangangahulugan ng pagmamahal, paggalang sa ating mga magulang. Meron ngang napakagandang sinabi ang Biblia. Sino man ang lumilingap sa kanilang ama o ina, hindi makakalimutan ng Panginoon. At sila ay makapagbabayad ng kanilang kasalanan. Ito ang unang pamamaraan ng pagpapahalaga sa ating pamilya. Bilang isang pamilya, panatilihin nating sentro 
ang Diyos. Pangalawa, ang ating mga pamilya ay hinirang ng Diyos para maging maliliit na mga simbahan. Kaya nga naman ang pamilyang Pilipino ay napapahalagahan kung ito ay nakaugat sa salita ng Diyos. Mga pamilya, iugat natin ang ating mga sarili sa salita ng Diyos. Kung meron man tayong mga gagawing mga alituntunin bilang mga magulang para sa ating mga pamilya, lagi ito ay dapat nakabatay sa salita ng Diyos. Kung meron din tayong mga gagawing mga desisyon bilang mga pamilya, mga magulang at mga anak ng sama-sama, ito ay dapat laging nakabatay sa salita ng Diyos. Dahil bilang mga pamilyang Pilipinong Kristiyano, hinirang tayo ng Diyos at itinalaga upang ang Kanyang salita ay maging isang buhay na katotohanan mismo sa ating mga pamilya. Madalas, napakarami ng mga tao ngayon na kapag sila ay nagpapakasal, dun lamang nila natatagpuan na hindi pa sila nabinyagan at nakumpilan. Kaya nga, ang dami-dami ng mga ang tatanda na doon pa nagpapabinyag at nagpapakumpil. Dahil noon pala ay nakalimutan ng kanilang mga magulang na sila ay pabinyagan o pakumpilan. Nitong nagdaang mga siyam na gabi ng pagsisimba ay may mga lumapit sa akin na ang edad ay 20 pataas. Hindi bababa sa tatlong katao na nagtanong, Father, pwede na po ba kaming mag-first communion? Ha? Kulang na lang mag-asawa na kayo, hindi pa kayo nag-first holy communion. Bakit? Kasi po yung pong mga magulang namin, hindi po nila inasikaso yung pagpapa-first holy communion at ni hindi man po kami dinadala sa simbahan. Ni hindi man lang po kami tinuruan ng pagdarasal at ng pangunahing katisismo ng simbahan. Kaya nga po, every time na lang na magsisimbang gabi, ngayon lang po kami ulit magsisimba, pag nakikita ko pong pumipila yung mga tao, naiingit po ako, ang sabi ng isa sa kanila. Dahil, bakit hindi ako makatanggap at hindi ko alam kung dapat ba akong tumanggap o hindi kasi hindi pa ako nag-first holy communion. Mga magulang, ang sentro ng pamilya at ang ugat nito ay ang Diyos at ito ay dapat pinangmamahalaan ng salita ng Diyos. Kaya mga magulang, Tungkulin ninyo na maging mga unang katikista sa inyong mga anak. Kayo ang unang magtuturo ng pananampalataya at panalangin sa kanila. Kayo ang maglalapit sa kanila sa Diyos. At parang awa nyo na, huwag ninyong kalilimutan na ipatanggap sa kanila ang mga sakramento ng simbahan na kanilang kinakailangan upang sila ay maging integral na bahagi ng ating inang simbahan. Never ever forget that your responsibility as parents is to inculcate in your children not only the education that they need in order that they will have practical skills in living on earth, but rather that they may always have a love for God through your teachings of the Word of God. 
Dahil kapag itinuro natin sa kanila ang mga salita ng Diyos, tunay na mahuhubog sila sa iba't ibang mga mabubuting mga katangian. At ano yung mga mabubuting katangian na yon? Ang sabi ni San Pablo sa mga taga-Kolosas, ito ang mga katangian na iyon na dapat ay taglayin ng bawat isa na miyembro ng pamilya, magulang man o anak, mahabagin, maganda ang kalooban, mapagpakumbaba, mabait, matiisin, mapagpaumanhin, mapagpatawad, at palagi ang payapa. Mapagpasalamat, mapagpaalala ng kabutihan at lagi at lagi nagpapasakop sa isa't isa nagmamahalan at marunong makinig at sumunod sa mga dapat pakinggan at sundan pangatlo at panghuli Ang pamilya na Pilipino bilang isang maliit na simbahan ay napapahalagahan natin sa pamamagitan ng ating pagkalinga at pagsunod bilang mga anak. Si Heso Kristo ay ating modelo. Si Heso Kristo na naging miyembro ng pamilya ni Maria at Jose. Bilang mga anak, si Kristo ay namuhay ng may pagmamahal at buong pagsunod sa kanyang mga magulang. Hindi ibig sabihin na ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo ay Diyos. eh hindi na siya naging mapagmahal o masunurin sa kanyang mga magulang. Bagkos, siya ay namuhay ng merong malaking pagmamahal at pagsunod sa kanyang mga magulang. Wika nga ng Biblia sa paglaki ni Kristo sa edad, sa grasya at pabor ng Diyos at ng tao, siya ay namuhay ng may pagsunod sa kanyang mga magulang. Ang sabi po ng Biblia ay ito mula sa Kolosas. Mga anak, sundin ninyong lagi ang inyong mga magulang sapagkat ikinalulugod yan ng Panginoon. At si Jesus, ito ay kanyang isinabuhay. At ito rin ang pinanghahawakan natin magpasa hanggang ngayon. Bakit tayo ay nananalangin kay Maria at kay Jose? Dahil sila ay itinuring ni Jesus na mga magulang. Magbabago ba ang pagkakaroon ng relasyon ng Panginoon kay Maria at Jose ngayong nasa langit na sila? Hindi. Dahil nakikinig at makikinig pa rin si Jesus kung papaanong siya ay nakinig at sumunod sa kanyang mga magulang na sina Maria at Jose dito sa lupa, ngayoy, kapag nanalangin din ang kanyang mga magulang na si Maria at Jose sa kanya, tiyak si Jesus nakikinig din sa kanila. Kaya mga minamahal na mga kapatid, tayong lahat ay mga anak, ang pagpapahalaga sa pamilya, ay pagsunod. Ang pagpapahalaga sa pamilya ay minamarkahan ng pag-ibig sa pamamagitan ng pagsunod. Dumarating kung minsan sa mga anak na, Father, kung minsan naman kasi napaka ano, uh, walang rason yung ipinapasunod ng aking mga magulang sa akin. Father, kung minsan po kasi yung ipinapasunod sa akin ng mga magulang, 
para sa kanila lang, hindi para sa akin. Father, kung minsan po kasi may sarili din akong gusto, may sarili din po akong pangarap, pero iba yung sinasabi ng mga magulang ko sa akin. Ito po ang tatandaan ninyo. Ang pagsunod ay hindi nangangahulugan ng pagsunod-sunurang bulag. Hindi tayo sumusunod na animoy mga bulag sa mga dapat nating sinusundan. Sumusunod tayo pero sumusunod tayo na may rason at merong kalayaan. Sumusunod tayo dahil sumusunod tayo na may batayan at merong individual na pagkakaloob ng sarili. Kaya nga po, hindi tayo obligadong sumunod kung ang ipinapasunod sa atin ay masama at hindi mabuti. Dahil tayo ay sumusunod lamang sa mga ipinapasunod sa atin na mabubuti at banal. Now, there are also moments when our parents will tell us, mas alam namin sa inyo dahil matanda na kami Kaya nga, makinig kayo sa amin. And when our parents will tell us those words, listen to them. Why? Because they know what they are saying. Lest, if we will push through with what we want in contradiction with that statement later on, magsisisi tayo. At sasabihin natin, tama pala ang mga sinabi ng magulang ko noon. Dahil nga, totoo rin, kapag sinabi ng magulang, papunta pa lang kayo, pabalik na kami, sampung beses ng pabalik-balik, totoo yun. Ilan sa atin ngayon yung mga ako, no? Personally, napakadami ko na pong mga nakausap na mga anak na ipinagpilitan nila yung sarili nilang gusto noon. Tapos nakipag-engage at nagkaroon agad ng anak. Maagang ikinasal at maagang nagkaroon ng pamilya. And then, sasabihin nila, Father, ngayon ko palang naiintindihan yung sinabi ng magulang ko noon kung sanang nakinig muna ako sa kanila. E di sana, hindi ko pinagsisisihan ng mga bagay na ito ngayon. Sumunod tayo. Dahil si Kristo, sumunod din. Makinig tayo. Dahil si Kristo, nakinig din. Ito ang pagpapahalaga sa pamilya. Gawing sentro ang Diyos. Umugat sa salita ng Diyos. At makinig, sumunod. Amen. Ipahayag natin ngayon ang ating pananampalataya. Sumasampalataya ako sa Diyos sa mga makapangyarihan sa lahat. Uh, English pala tayo. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us joyfully give thanks to the Heavenly Father for sending His Son to become a member of our human family. With one heart, let us pray. Hear the prayer of your family, O Lord. Hear the prayer of your family, O Lord. May Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, religious and lay leaders, continually strive to grow in holiness in Christ by fulfilling their responsibilities in synodality and brotherhood. We pray. Hear the prayer of your family, O Lord. May government officials and civil leaders lead their constituents by their good example, promote peace and prosperity among the people, and support families beset by calamity, injustice, and poverty. We pray. Hear the prayer of your family, O Lord. May families that are severely tried by separation and problems related to drugs and sexual abuse receive healing and comfort from Jesus' love and from their communities. We pray. Hear the prayer of your family, O Lord. May all families be protected from the harm brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray. Hear the prayer of your family, O Lord. May our departed brothers and sisters rest in God's eternal embrace of peace. We pray. Hear the prayer of your family, O Lord. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Hear the prayer of your family, O Lord. Heavenly Father, listen to your family whom you call to become holy like your Son. Send us your Spirit as we grow daily in your love and truth, that we may honor you in our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, dear brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, a sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind. So that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to setting up your sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Wherefore, O Lord, as we celebrate a memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by his death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that he may, we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints as, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Enrique, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say... Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, but by the help of mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not please on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Oh 
mga kapatid narito ang kordero ng Diyos na nag-aalis ng mga kasalan ng sanlibutan. Blessed are we who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. 
Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share the company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. In other countries, they have started to experience the third wave of this pandemic. There are also other countries again that have locked themselves up. They have closed their borders once again. And now they are returning to the protocols of the first wave. Because the virus that is spreading is highly transmissible and deadlier than the Delta. And so, we prepare ourselves for whatever is in the future. But, we can prepare ourselves to put a stop to this pandemic and never experience that wave in our country. So together, we continue to pray the Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for all health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body. Strengthen their commitment protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this, O Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. Saint Rock. Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. Saint Pedro Colungsod. Pray for us. All the angels and saints in heaven. Pray for us. We are still in the octave of Christmas. Pag sinasabi po nating octave of Christmas. It is the the eighth day celebration of Christmas. Dahil po ang Pasko ay hindi lamang limitado sa December 25. Ang simbahan ginagawa niya itong extended into eight days. Kaya nga po ang December 25 ay na extend po yan sa loob ng walong araw sa lahat ng mga pagdiriwang ng liturhiya. And remember, Christmas has just started. It is started on Christmas Eve. And it will end on the eve of the feast of the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the week of the Epiphany. So yan po ang panahon ng Pasko. Kaya may panahon pa po yung mga hindi pa nagbigay ng regalo. May panahon pa po kayo. Mahaba pa po. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas.